Happy Sabbath, everyone. Happy, Happy Snowflake Day. That's what my daughter told me this morning as she was not even noticing that she didn't have a jacket on and she was freezing outside, jumping around with her tongue sticking out telling me it's snowflake day, it's snowflake day. So happy snowflake day to all of you. And um, we're so glad you chose to come here and worship with us this Sabbath. My name is Luis Gracia. I am the pastor here at the College Church. And we have a wonderful worship service planned for you today. And I'd like to thank Alana Katie for putting all this together. I know she had a ton of help, but I do want to thank Alana for putting in a lot of time putting this worship service together for us. A few announcements I want to share with you. To begin with, there is a blue insert, and these are the lyrics for our praise time today. So when it is time for praise time, please take out your blue insert, and those will be the, 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 the songs that we will sing today during that segment of our worship service. Adventurers, our Adventure Club, it, our meeting tomorrow, rain, sleet, snow, hail, whatever might be going on, we will meet here at 10 a.m., at the church for adventurers. Uh, Wednesday, playtime continues. And, uh, and then Wednesday night will be our last installment of the Bible study, His Story. That is at 7 p.m. Wednesday night. Um, SLA will have their uh, second and final Christmas concert on Friday night. That is for the upper grades, grades 7 through 12, right here at the church. Last night was beautiful. I don't know how many were able to come last night, but it was a packed house, and it was just a wonderful experience uh, to see these little kids and bigger kids just praising the Lord with their uh, instruments, with their voices. It was wonderful. You'll notice on the next panel of our announcements, the second panel of announcements, we have donation deadlines. Take some time to look through that. People donate uh, at the end of the year in a variety of different ways for tax purposes and all that kind of thing. So please take a time to look through those bullet points so that you can know when those uh, time limits, time constraints are for donations. Uh, next Sabbath, there is a, a, quite a few things going on actually next weekend. On Sabbath, the 16th, AUC, Atlantic Union College, our very own college right across the street, will be having a telethon. It will be live streamed. Um, and so while the live streaming is going on, people can call in and donate and all of that to AUC. That'll happen from 2 o'clock to, to 8 o'clock. And all of the links where you can watch uh, the live stream is listed there in the bulletin. Um, also on uh, that Sabbath at 5 p.m., our youth, that's grades 9 through 12, will be having a Christmas party at Pastor Heather's house. And that is at 5 p.m. and the address is there um, in the bulletin for all of our 9 through 12th graders. On Sunday, not tomorrow, but the following weekend, December 17th, in Macklin Auditorium, Whitney Phipps, Pastor Whitney Phipps, will be having a concert. It is free, but a free will offering will be collected. And he is a fantastic servant of the Lord, wonderful voice. Many of you have heard him before, but maybe you haven't heard him live. Uh, but all are invited to be part of that concert at Macklin Auditorium, not tomorrow, but next Sunday, December 17th. Women's Night Out will be happening um, again, not this Monday, but the following on December 18th, and there will be a Yankee swap. That is at the College Town Inn at Five Corners, which is now Four Corners. That's very confusing. Um, thank you, Town of Lancaster. Um, so please plan to attend that, women of all ages. You can come, be part of the Yankee swap, uh, and there are some directions there in the bulletin as to what, that's all, what is all involved there. Uh, a couple of things I want to conclude with here. On December 23rd is a very special Sabbath here as well. And that is when we have our Christmas breakfast. And we want to encourage and invite all of you to prepare your favorite uh, uh, breakfast dishes, maybe with a little bit of a, a Christmas theme if, you, if you're so inclined, and bring them to the church Sabbath morning at 9 a.m. And all are invited to come and have a Christmas breakfast. That will take the place of Sabbath school. So there won't be Sabbath school in the sanctuary or for the children's either. We will all come together and have a wonderful breakfast together and then come into the sanctuary at about 11 o'clock so that at 11.15 we will start our special worship service which is to celebrate the birth of Christ 
Um, and there will be, um, we'll be worshiping through word, through music, through scripture, um, and all the children will be participating, all the different Sabbath school levels and all of that. So we're very excited about that program as we are about today's as well. And finally, the very last thing in our announcements section, there is a special message. I just want to call your attention to it from the Trot family, a special thank you message to um, their church family, which is all of us here at College Church. I just wanted to call your attention to that whenever you have a moment to read through that special thank you message from the Trots. Again, happy Sabbath, happy Snowflake Day, as my daughter calls it, and we hope you gain a wonderful blessing from this worship service. Let's bow our heads for prayer. Oh Lord, come into our hearts. Help the pastor speak. And as the choir sings, we will rejoice to you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Advent candle is the candle of joy. We read in Luke, that night some shepherds were in the fields outside the village, guarding their flocks of sheep. Suddenly an angel appeared among them, and the landscape shone bright with the glory of the Lord. They were badly frightened, but the angel reassured them. Don't be afraid, he said. I will bring you the most joyful news ever, announced the angel, and it is for everyone. The Savior, yes, the Messiah, the Lord, has been born tonight in Bethlehem. How will you recognize him? You will find a baby wrapped in a blanket lying in a manger. Suddenly, the angel was joined by a vast host of others, the armies of heaven praising God. Glory to God in the highest heaven, they sang, and peace on earth for those all those pleasing him. As we lit this third candle, let us think about why Jesus came to earth on the cold night so long ago, and a marvel that because of his birth, life, death, death and resurrection, we have not suffered God's just punishment for our sins, but rather have been saved from them. Let our hearts be filled with joy for our Lord Jesus Christ.
Please join us in standing and singing um, the praise team this morning. We're going to begin with hymn 125.
Oh, come, let us adore him, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Good morning, church. Welcome to another opportunity to show our praise and thanksgiving to God. If you are interested in joining us up front, please do so at this time. Giver of immortal gladness, fill us with the light of day. Teach us how to love each other. Lift us to the joy divine. Our Father and our God, it is such a wonderful experience to be able to come into your presence to give you thanks and to give you praise. Lord, we have spent a week out in our neighborhoods, our communities, at our jobs. And there, Lord, we hope that we were able to show others just how much you love us and you love them. And Lord, we know that there were times when we may not have been able to show it as well as we should have. Forgive us for those times, we pray. Lord, we come to you, the giver of all good gifts. We understand, Lord, that sometimes those good gifts that you give to us, we don't understand. And so sometimes we are disappointed. Sometimes we doubt a little bit. And sometimes, Lord, we ask why. And so we are gathered here, Lord, with all these different emotions. Some of thanksgiving for all that you have given. Some with a question loving you still, but asking the question, why? And so, Lord, open your will to us even at this moment so that we can understand why. And if we never get to understand why here, Lord, may our faith be so strong that we know that there will be a time when you will explain why, and we will be joyous in your explanation. Lord, we have special prayer for those who at this time are going through health concerns. We want to remember Shirley, Ron, Madeline, Bob, Dean, Linda, Charlotte, Paul, Juanita, Quail, Stan, John, Joshua, Dylan, Thor. We know, Lord, that there are others who at this time have health concerns and their names aren't here. But we ask you, Lord, in your omniscience to be with them, to comfort, to console, and to strengthen. We remember those who at this time are in military service and those who are studying abroad. Among those we include Autumn, Robbie, Stephen and Jonathan. At this time of year, Lord, 
They are distant in geography, but may they feel the presence of family and friends and home, even as they are far away. We want, Lord, always to remember that there, comes a there will come a time when you will burst the clouds of heaven and you will come to take us home. Lord, we pray that we will be ready, young and old, rich and poor, all who have called on your name. May we be able at that time, dear Lord, to look up and say, Lo, here is my God. I have waited for you, and here you are. Lord, help us to be ready. Let, help us to bring others to that state of readiness, we pray. And we ask, Lord, that your presence here in this worship may help us to be strengthened in preparation for that day. Thank you, Jesus, for all you do for us. Amen. Offerings today are for the world budget. <clears throat> a 
portion of today's world budget offering goes towards the NAD Adventist Community Services. Then the king will say to those on his right hand, Come, you blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. I was a stranger, and you took me in. I was naked, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you visited me. I was in prison, and you came to me. The world budget today supports Adventist community services in the North American division. By supporting ACS, you can make a lasting impact on your community and beyond, whether it's volunteering your time, donating goods, or contributing financially. By touching one heart, one family, one community, we can transform the world. Jesus lived his life as a humble servant, just as the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. Therefore, the bottom line of the Christian journey is to be servants of God. Adventist Community Services provides you with opportunities to be servants of God in your own communities. They lend their support and assistance in disaster relief ministries, elder care, crisis care, urban ministries, tutoring, mentoring, hope for humanity, and youth and young adults empowered to serve. Your financial gifts to the Adventist Community Services offering will make it possible to continue transforming communities, one life at a time. Let us pray. Lord, in this season of giving, help us to be givers. Help us to remember the gift that you gave. And in doing so, may we be moved to do as much as we can by giving of our time, by giving of our special talents, by giving of anything that may be needed by our neighbor. Thank you, Lord, for your example. Amen.
strong and let your heart take courage. Wait for the Lord. Today I'm going to tell you a, one of my son's favorite stories. Oh, thank you so much for that hug. I'm gonna tell you the story of the crippled lamb. Have you ever heard that story? No? Oh, it's a beautiful story. So listen closely. Once upon a time, in a sunny valley, there lived a little lamb named Joshua. He was white with black spots, black feet, and sad eyes. Joshua felt sad when he saw the other lambs with snow white wool and no spots. He felt sad when he saw the other sheep with their moms and dads because he didn't have a mom or dad. But he felt saddest when he saw the other lambs running and jumping because he couldn't. You see, Josh had been born with one leg that didn't work right. He was crippled. He always limped when he walked. That's why he always watched while the other lambs ran and played. Josh felt sad and alone, except when Abigail was around. Abigail was Josh's best friend. How many of you have best friends? Yes. Isn't it nice when your best friend is around? Yes. She didn't look like a friend for a lamb. She was an old cow. She was brown and with white blotches that looked like rain puddles on a path. Her belly was as round as a barrel and her voice was always kind and friendly. Some of Josh's favorite hours were spent with Abigail. They loved to pretend that they were on adventures in distant lands. How many of you pretend when you're with your best friend? Yeah, yeah. Josh liked to listen to Abigail tell stories about the stars. They would spend hours on the hill looking into the valley. They were good friends. But even with a friend like Abigail, Josh still got sad. It made him sad to be the only lamb who could not run and jump and play in the grass. That's when Abigail would turn to him and say, don't be sad, little Joshua. God has a special place for those who feel left out. Josh wanted to believe her, but it was hard. Some days he felt just so alone. He felt sad, alone, and he, one day when the shepherds decided 
to take the lamb to the next valley where there was more grass, he felt so all alone. The sheep had been in this valley so long, the ground was nearly bare. All the sheep were excited when the shepherd told them they were going to a new meadow. As they prepared to leave, Josh hobbled over and took his place on the edge of the group. But the others started laughing at him. You're too slow to go all the way to the next valley. Go back, slow poke. We'll never get there if we have to wait for you. Go back, Joshua. That's when Joshua looked up and saw the shepherd standing in front of him. They're, they're right, my little Joshua. You better go back. This trip is too long for you. Go and spend the night in the stable. Joshua looked at the man for a long time. Then he turned and slowly began limping away. When Joshua got to the top of the hill, he looked back and saw all the other sheep headed toward the green grass. Never before had he felt so left out. A big tear slipped out of his eye and rolled down his nose and fell on a rock. Just then, he heard Abigail behind him, and Abigail said what she always said when Josh felt sad. Don't be sad, little Joshua. God has a special place for those who feel left out. Slowly, the two friends turned and walked to the stable together. By the time they got to the little barn, the sun was setting like a big orange ball. Joshua and Abigail went inside and began to eat some hay out of the feed box. They were very hungry, and the hay tasted good. Mm. For a little while, Josh forgot that he had been left behind. Go to sleep, little friend, Abigail said after they finished eating. You've had a hard day. Josh was tired, so he lay down in the corner on some straw and closed his eyes. He felt Abigail lay down beside him, and he was glad to have Abigail as his friend. How many of you are glad to have friends? Are you glad to have friends? Yes. I am too. They help us so much. Soon Josh was asleep. At first, he slept soundly, curled up against Abigail's back. In his sleep, he dreamed. He dreamed of running and jumping, just like all the other sheep. He dreamed of long walks with Abigail through the valley. He dreamed of being in a place where he never, ever, ever felt left out. Suddenly, strange noises woke him up. 
Oh dear, I wonder what that noise was. Do you wonder? Do you wonder? I know, I wonder what it is. Abigail, he whispered, wake up, I'm scared. Abigail lifted her big head and looked around like cows do. You know how they look around with their big eyes. The stable was dark except for a small lamp hanging on the wall. Somebody is here, Josh whispered. They looked across the dimly lighted stable. There, laying on some fresh hay in the feed box was a baby. A young woman was resting on a big pile of hay beside the feed box. Joshua looked at Abigail thinking his friend could tell him what was going on. But Abigail was just as surprised as Joshua was. A baby in a stable? Joshua looked again at the woman and child, then limped across the stable. He stopped next to the mother and looked into the baby's face. The baby was crying. He was cold. The woman picked up the baby and put him on the hay next to her. Josh looked around the stable for something to keep the baby warm. Usually there were blankets, but not tonight. The shepherds had taken them on their trip across the valley. Then Josh remembered his own soft, warm wool. Timidly, he walked over and curled up close to the baby. Thank you, little lamb, the baby's mother said softly. Soon the little child stopped crying and went back to sleep. About that time, a man entered the stable carrying some rags. I'm sorry, Mary, he explained. This is all the cover I could find. It's okay, she answered. This little lamb has kept the new king warm. A king? Joshua looked at the baby and wondered who he might be. Who do you think he was? His name is Jesus. Mary spoke as if she knew Josh's question. God's son. He came from heaven to teach us about God. Just then, there was another noise at the door. It was the shepherds, the one who had left Joshua behind. Their eyes were big and they were excited. We saw a big bright light and heard the angels. They began. Then they saw Joshua next to the baby. Joshua, do you know who this baby is? He does now. It was the young mother who was speaking. She looked at Joshua and smiled. God has heard your prayers, little lamb. This little baby is the answer.
Joshua will look down at the baby. Somehow he knew this was a special child and this was a special moment. He also understood why he had been born with a crippled lamb, leg. Had he been like the other sheep, he would have been in the valley. But since he was different, he was in the stable among the first to welcome Jesus into the world. Isn't that amazing? He was even there before the wise men. Wow. Joshua turned and walked back to Abigail and took his place beside his friend. You were right, he told her. God does have a special place for me. Does God have a special place for you too? Yes, each of you. God has a very special place. Well, thank you. You may go back to your seat. Let's open our hymns to hymn number 136. 136. standing and turn to your bulletins where we will have a benediction responsive reading. I hope you're all blessed by today's service. It's so wonderful that each and every one of us is brought into this world and we're all individually different. But the birth of Christ brings us all together as one large family. Now let's read together. Loving Father, help us remember the birth of Jesus that we may share in the song of the angels and the gladness of the shepherds and the worship of the wise men. Close, Close the, the door, door of hate and, and open the door of love all over the world. Let kindness come with every gift and good desires with every greeting. Deliver us from evil 
by the blessing which Christ brings and teach us to be merry with clear hearts. To be thankful and patient as we wait for your timing with grateful thoughts, forgiving and forgiven. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you. 